Hello, this is Patrick and welcome to some more electric vehicle news. It's been a pretty busy couple weeks and I have some highlights here of some of the things that I thought were interesting from the last earnings call at Tesla, a few things about Rivian, and just some personal thoughts on the used vehicle market right now for EVs because it's crazy. All right, first off, new colors. It's, it's pretty cool. I drive over to Colorado fairly often. Here in Wyoming, there's, there's a few Teslas around. Even on my block, there's a few Teslas, which is very new and recent. They're all the same colors, right? There's a bunch of white ones because that's a free color. Got a lot of blues, reds. That's about it. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of colors. Over at the Gigafactory in Berlin, Tesla is talking about their new paint factory. They got a quick silver and midnight cherry red. And they're, they're really cool because they're made from highly pigmented metallic paint designed to change depending on the viewing angle and the light, kind of like some of the, you've, I've seen some of these wraps that people get and like, depending on how you look them, it's one color and it's another and the shade, it, they're pretty slick. And this is, this is because they can use up to 13 layers of depth. So there's a lot of different layers of paint in there. They say it gives it an added dimension and a hand painted look. So say the Tesla Twitter account. <laughs> This, these are only available, though, in Europe and the Middle East, but Elon has mentioned in the past that they will eventually upgrade the paint factories in Fremont. He has made it clear on Texas. I would have to imagine it already has that paint factory. They're only making Model Ys, Ys there right now, and they'll be making Cybertrucks, which don't require any paint. We'll see. Or maybe they're, they've got more of a standard paint factory in there right now, and they'll be upgrading to what Berlin has, depending on how, it tur how things work out, right? It's kind of like their beta paint shop. That's my theory. What are yours? Comment below. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure. And then, uh, on Twitter, someone asked, can we please get some more paint color options in the U S and Elon said, yes. So hopefully in the U S we'll also get some additional paint colors. They might not be as cool. They might be a throwback to some of the old colors that, that used to be available on the model S back in the day. Cause there used to be a lot of paint colors, but they narrowed it down to the most popular ones. And one of the reasons they did that, Elon was saying, is they wanted to be able to do quick repairs, like one hour repairs. So instead of, you know, waiting for a, a bumper to come in and have it be painted and other to match, they could get it precise enough that they could just replace the same color bumper and you wouldn't really notice it'd be, it, it would all match. It'll be interesting to see what colors come out of this. I know over in, I think it was China for a while, and they still might offer wraps so you could get different colors, like a pre-wrapped vehicle when you order it they had partnered with a third party that did that. It was something along those lines. If you remember other big news, big, big news physically is the Tesla Semi is finally going into production in November. They're doing the first deliveries in December for Pepsi and Elon's going to be there talking about it. It actually is going to be a 500 mile range truck and that's fully loaded up to 80,000 pound payload. And he said, this is, you know, level ground going highway speeds or freeway speeds, not necessarily over mountains. There's already been a couple of mega chargers that have been made for these semis because they're gonna, they're basically like four combined superchargers in one to charge up these massive battery packs inside the Tesla semis. Other interesting note is they're the same battery cells that are in the current Model 3s, or well, they didn't exactly specify which battery cells, but they're not the new. Uh, 3680s that are in the stru structural pack of the new Model Ys being built over in uh, Berlin and in Giga Texas. So they're, they're kind of limiting which vehicles use those right now. Although they said they are ramping up production on those batteries and there's other uh, battery makers that are going to be making them for Tesla. There's a new firmware update that shows better energy consumption versus projected and it gives range tips. So when that update comes out, get it because it looks pretty cool. I can't wait to try it, but we're on the full self-driving beta and all the regular updates are delayed by like a month or two because the, the stacks are not aligned. <laughs> the releases aren't aligned from full self-driving beta and the, the public um, software builds that are out there for the firmware. Now a little bit of Rivian news because I have both right now. I've got Teslas and I've got Rivian. Uh, well, just one Tesla, but my work, we've got Teslas, my family, my sister, my mom, uh, my other sister, they all have Teslas. So Rivian is on track to do 20,000 vehicles this year. So yay, Rivian. <laughs> uh, they had to do a massive recall, which involved tightening a nut above the arm joint because 
you could potentially go out of whack and lose steering control. Not great, but it was interesting reading about how they found out they use a torque wrench that's tied to a computer in a database so they can see exactly how much torque they put on every single piece of the vehicle when it's made. Thousands and thousands apart going to a database. And they determined that they lost track um, at some point on this one particular part. And when they regained it back, they realized, uh-oh, it wasn't torqued enough. So they decided, don't risk it. We're just going to go out and check them all. <laughs> so basically, almost every single Rivian made so far, I think there's like 9,000 of them or so, they had to go back and retighten the bolts. But they come out to you. If you just go over there, you just get into a line and they just do it really quick. Uh, they let uh, all the owners know the day before they did the press release. I think they handled their first major recall great. Um, it's a voluntary recall. It wasn't forced or mandated, but they're thinking safety first. And speaking of safety first, I saw my first big wrecked Rivian today online. Whew. Um, the other car did not fare very well. It was an SUV and it was, it was bad. And unfortunately, the person in that vehicle did not survive. But the Rivian was on its top and holding just fine. It didn't look like, you know, the cab collapsed on itself or anything. And it looked like it was in really good shape. And people were commenting, what kind of force does it take to flip a 7,000 pound truck? Um, yeah, it must, I don't know any of the details. I just saw the picture and I thought it was interesting that these new automakers such as Tesla and Rivian are giving so much thought into safety because, you know, there's a lot less moving parts and things, they can build in additional safety measures that just weren't uh, in, in crumple zones and buffer areas that just weren't available in previous vehicles. There's there's a new software update for Rivian coming out, I think this weekend, but it's got a kneel mode, which is really cool because the, the air suspension, Tesla should do this too. So when you get to your destination, it'll lower so you can get out. And so when you get back in, it'll return back to its regular suspension height. I've been doing this personally because it is too high up for me <laughs> it, it's it's really high and so i just set it to the lowest suspension to get out and then when i go off i'll manually change it so uh, it's cool that that's going to be an automatic thing now i think it's a great idea tesla should do it in the s and the x with air suspension what do you guys think i, I think it's great it's like tesla's uh easy entry mode with the seats same idea but with the actual suspension of the vehicle. I was in Rivian news, but I'm gonna jump back to Tesla again, because I, I just, that's how I am. Uh, Tesla put voting up for superchargers. Rivian should do the same. So you can go into a map and you can vote on where they should put the next superchargers. Not great for areas with less population, because uh, unless people travel through there a lot, they're not gonna get as many votes. So of course, most of the votes go to California. That's where everybody lives that drives Teslas. They may be short on them, but they have them already. <laughs> so it's a little frustrating in areas that need them and don't have any at all. And what do you guys think about that? I mean, I don't know, I own an electric car charging company, so it should be a good thing for me, right? Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll have a lot more chargers here in Wyoming next year if everything goes according to plan. And no matter who ends up getting the, the funding, um, we'll have more, which would be great. Thank you guys so much for watching this show, my ranting and raving. Oh, I did want to touch just a little bit about the used market, because right now you can get a Tesla probably at the best prices for the Model 3 in a very long time since the market went crazy and they used to be like almost $60,000 for any used Tesla. You can now get a used Model 3 for around $35,000 with full self-driving. So that's, that's pretty cool. And Model X's... Uh, it's interesting because now everybody finally started getting the ones they ordered a year and a half ago. So you can get a pretty good deal on a used one. I'm either selling this Rivian or the Model X. I have them both for sale right now. If you're interested, let me know. Pox at twosmartguys.com. And yeah, I, I'll give you a very reasonable deal. <laughs> Especially if you watch the show. If you like this show, please subscribe, like, share, all that fun stuff. It lets me know that you guys are watching. Uh, please comment so I can have something to do. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye. This has been a Two Smart Guys production. <laughs>